Hi, Year 3. Um, so this week we are continuing poetry and we are still using poems from the Werewolf Club rules. Um, so today's lesson and tomorrow's lesson is a two-part lesson. Today we are going to be planning a poem which you will be writing tomorrow and the poem is going to be about uh, a memorable adult in school. So this might be your current teacher, it might be your reception or your year one or two teacher or it might be an LSA in school. So I'm going to read you one, the first poem and then we will discuss them and then read the other two poems. So this poem is called Miss Flotsam. Miss Flotsam was my reception teacher. She travelled the world. Brown hair turned golden under distant suns, clothes carrying colours from countless corners of continents. When my mother's face spilled a gush of adolescent tears at the school gates, Miss Flotsam soaked up the drops in Peruvian alpaca, caught splashes in Himalayan singing bowls, let sobs fall on Indonesian gamelans. Miss Flotsam had flown through air pockets in jumbo jets, sailed the seven seas in opposite directions, cycled through cyclones with dengue fever, soothed mothers when their hearts heaved. When the bully punched me for being too brown, Miss Flotsam glared at him with an eye that could turn fists into begging bowls. When my mother was late, the chairs upturned on the desks, Miss Flotsam read to me stories of imperfect families and unexpected heroes. When I dozed in class, Miss, Miss Flotsam let me sleep through maths, through lunch, through the tuk-tuk traffic, through the home time bell. When I was naughty, Miss Flotsam told me off, asked of the disasters, destroying my home, and placed sandbags around my eyes. When Miss, Flo um, Miss Flotsam climbed peaks, circled by vultures, waded rivers with unseen bottoms, bought ugly fruits in dusty languages, in foreign markets, spoke to parents in dialects they could understand, sang to pupils in rhythms they could bear. Now I'm sure there were some new words and unfamiliar phrases in that poem. So I've just underlined two here. We've got the Peruvian alpaca, which you might be able to guess is an alpaca from Peru. And then we have Indonesia gamelans. And this is an ensemble of music, which they play in Indonesia. Um, and most of the instruments are percussion instruments. So before we move on to the next poem, I'd just like you to quickly have a think about these three questions. So what do we know about Miss Flotsam from the way she is described by the poet? Now, I would say that she has done lots of travelling in her time, as the poem mentions that she has cycled through cyclones um, and sailed the seven seas. So I think she likes an adventure. And I'd like you to think about these following two questions before we move on to the next poem. What did you like about the poem? And was there anything you didn't like about the poem? So just pause the video now to have a think about these questions. So something really important that you must know about this poem is that Miss Flotsam is not actually her name. Flotsam um, is a word for uh, debris that is often found in the water. Now, it's not usually th thrown aboard. It's often as a result of a shipwreck. So... Um, we don't actually know the name of this teacher. This is not her real name. So this poem is called Make It Bigger, Eileen. In art I drew a park with a pond and railings and children playing and trees with multicoloured leaves and mothers with pushchairs wearing hats that jumped and joggers running with three legs and skaters skating on thin ice with elephants on their backs and pigeons playing cards on bread tables and grass with eyes and a nose, and flowers with walking sticks and headphones, and clouds that rained smells, and a sun as deep as an ocean, and stones that bled, and rainbows with, star with stairs. Sir said, tut, 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 bigger, Eileen, your picture must be bigger. So I drew a duck. So what do you think this teacher is like now, compared to Miss Flotsam? We know a lot about what the student drew. We don't know so much about the teacher. This is all we know about the teacher. Tut, 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 bigger, Eileen. Your picture must be bigger. I don't think this teacher has acknowledged all of the wonderful things that this um, child has drawn. She's got, he or she has got a great imagination and he hasn't mentioned anything about that. Okay, so this final poem is an A star from Miss Koo and you will probably remember this from last week when Miss Tin read it to you. The sun is as long as spaghetti, I said. 
No, said Miss Coo, that can't be right. Do it again and do it right. Water is as twinkly as the stars, I said. No, said Miss Coo, that can't be right. Do it again and do it right. Clouds of fire in the night sky, I said. No, said Miss Coo, that can't be right. Do it again and do it right. I wrote a poem for Miss Coo's class. The sun is round, water is wet, the clouds are fluffy. A star. So I want you to think about what we know about Miss Coo from this poem. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the task for today. So you're going to be planning your poem, which you will be writing tomorrow. So first of all, you need to think about an adult in school that you would like to write your poem about. Um, and it's worth noting that your poem is going to be written in the free verse. So all of the poems that I read to you today were free verse poems. Um, and that means that they don't necessarily rhyme. So no, there were no rhyming words in those poems. Um, and it doesn't have a particular rhythm. So don't worry too much today about getting your poems to rhyme or to follow a particular rhythm. Because we will be doing that later on in the week. So here is an example of a plan which I have done. Um, now you might want to um, add some extra details to this, but these are some important things that you'll need to include in your poem. So what do you know about your teacher? Um, this can be something that you might know about them from outside of school. So do they have any pets? Do they like playing sport? Do they like to sing or do they love to read? What is the appearance of the teacher? You must include that in your poem too. What does your teacher do to help you? So um, I'm sure they help you with your work. Um, if you're feeling sad, does your teacher or does the adult help to cheer you up? What is special about this teacher or this adult? Do they make you laugh? Do they read you stories? Do they help you with your work when you're stuck? And what is your teacher's personality? Is he, is he or she funny, energetic? And finally, if you did want to write a poem like the Miss Flotsam poem, you could challenge yourself and try and think of an alternative name for the memorable adult you are writing your poem about. You don't have to do this. You don't have to write your poem in that structure. Remember, it's free verse, so it doesn't have to rhyme or have a particular rhythm. But that's just something that you might want to add to your poem too. So in today's English folder, you will find all of these questions that I've got on my plan for you to put onto your plan. Um, there are also a couple of poems about teachers, um, some poems that I haven't read to you today. Those can give you some more ideas of things for you to include in your poem. And also the three poems which I read to you today are on there and they're typed up. So you can have another look at those and have another read at those. So remember today we are just planning the poem and tomorrow we will be writing it.